This has been a year of protests and unrest, recalling a similar time more than a half a century ago. Mm -hmm. That is now the subject of a Netflix movie. Much of it shot here. CBS News Jim Williams has a story of the real life Chicagoan who documented the courtroom drama at the heart of the film. Let's rehearse. Writer director Aaron Sorkin tells the story of the Chicago 7, recreating that tumultuous period on the streets and in the courtroom. But here at the Edgewater Historical Society, this is no recreation. It was about how she evolved during the trial. The real pages of Jean Fritz's journal describe her four months as a juror in the 1969 trial depicted in the film. How the government twisted around everything. Marjorie Fritz Birch is Jean's daughter and curator of the exhibit. What she learned, what she experienced, everything that she wrote about in her journal. The trial was a spectacle, part performance art, at Chicago's Dirksen Federal Building. Democratic Party of the United States. A year before, in 1968, during the Democratic National Convention, <laughs> police clashed with anti Vietnam War protesters. A commission blamed the cops, called it a police riot. But federal prosecutors charged eight protest organizers with crossing state lines to incite a riot. At the defense table. As shown in the movie, defendant Bobby Seale argued with Judge Julius Hoffman who ordered Seal bound and gagged. Get your hands off me. Marjorie Fritz Birch says that moment upset her mother terribly. She was shaking in the courtroom and crying. And she wrote in her journal, she said, I can't believe that something like this has happened in my country. Seal's case was declared a mistrial and the Chicago 8 became the Chicago 7. Five of the defendants were convicted, but eventually all the convictions were overturned. Thanks in part, Marjorie Fritz Birch says, to her mother's testimony in appellate court. She realized like early on that nothing they were doing was right and it was unconstitutional. Today's protests echo that period more than 50 years ago, a time that forever changed Jean Fritz. One thing that really bothered her more than anything else that she kept writing in her journal, she said, I've never been afraid of my government before. She said, I'm now afraid of my government. Jean's daughter says it was a very tense time for the family. They were subjected to hate mail and death threats. The country, like it is today, was very much divided. By the way, Jean died a couple of years ago, shortly before her 100th birthday, Brad. Mm -hmm. Boy, that final sound bite, fearful of the government. The movie, Jim, uh, was supposed to have a wide release in theaters, then COVID-19 hit, Paramount sold it to Netflix, which will start streaming at Friday. So how did Aaron, Aaron Sorkin, of course, a legend in the game, how did he get involved? Yeah, Hollywood heavy hitter. He said he had written several versions of the script over the years, and then after the 2016 presidential election, Steven Spielberg said, you need, you need to make this film right now, and you need to direct it. <laughs> If Steven Spielberg says so. Jim Williams, thank you. It will go on the watch list this weekend. Our digital streaming network, CBSN Chicago, will also air a special presentation looking back at these historic events. I saw a preview of it. You're going to want to see it. We'll feature the author of the book on which the movie is based and exclusive footage from our archives, our extensive archives. Tune in for the, the Chicago 7 on Friday. Again, on CBSChicago.com, CBSN, three showings, 9 a.m., noon, and 3 p.m.